for the geological one, can you use um the Caribbean plates as boundaries? Yes, yes, you could. Okay, sir. Sir, I also have a question. Go ahead. Um, in relation to the countries excluded or the countries included, mm -hmm. well, really for the countries included, uh, the geographical definition, when we were discussing it, we said one of the limitations is that several Central American countries can be included in that definition. Mm -hmm. So under that category, could we put a few Central American countries as well? Is that yes. what you're asking for? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right, any other question, ladies? For this class, I think we have an Abigail Davis. Yes, sir. So Abigail, you are the new student, right? Yes, please. Okay. The I'm going to. Are uh, you sent an? E, are you in the WhatsApp group? No, not. Okay. If someone could you add her to the WhatsApp group for me, please? I think Elliot. Elliot, you are one of the admin, right? Yes. Um, Abigail, can you send me your number, please, in the chat? Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks. All right. Good, good. All right, ladies. So for today, what we're going to do, we're going to look at the historical process. So we finished with one topic already. Um, oh, before I go on, Abigail, all the PowerPoints are on the PowerPoints and also the recording for the previous classes, they are on YouTube. So you can check YouTube for those classes to, to be up to date. If there's any query, you can get to me and ask, all right? All right, learning objectives. So we are historical process. We need to know, we need to analyze the historical process in the Caribbean. We need to define migration. We need to describe, we need to describe the theories of indigenous migration. For some of you, this is going to be a recap of grade 10 history. To some extent, to some um, not, or maybe grade seven history. But it's, a, it's part of the historical process and we have to discuss it. It's, something that most of you would have known already. Now, when we're talking about the historical process, we are really talking about, are you seeing the timeline clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good. When we talk about the historical process, ladies, we're really talking about the, a timeline of the Caribbean history, what happened during the period. So we know 11,000 years ago, some people came into the Caribbean, what we know um, came up to, to the Americas. They settled in North America, Central America, South America, venture into the Caribbean 11 years ago. About 1,200 uh, AD, uh, we had the migration of indigenous people coming into the Caribbean. Then they were living quite happily from 1200 to 1492, quite a number of years, they were living quite happily together, right? Indigenous people, they not really happily because they have problems between indigenous groups. But one of the things is going to happen is that Christopher Columbus is going to arrive. And once Christopher Columbus arrived, that's the end of the of the, the indigenous people. So what we're going to have is that the arrival of Christopher Columbus, once he arrived, he did not discover, he came, he saw, and he conquered. Didn't discover. 
1492, Christopher Columbus arrived. After that now, ladies, by the 1500, they are going to establish settlements in the Caribbean. Quite a lot of places going to be settled. They are going to settle the area, most of the Greater Antilles, for example, Cuba, the island of Hispaniola, Jamaica. They are going to settle in those areas. And after that now, ladies, after the Europe, the Spanish settled, then other people going to hear about the, all the money that are the wealth that the Spanish is gaining from this newfound land, right? In the Americas. And so other European groups are coming after. So you're going to have the English, you're going to have this, the, the French, the Dutch, all these other groups are coming in. And what they are going to do is that they're going to try to conquer areas. One of the first places, ladies, please write this down, is a popular multiple choice question. One of the first places that the English settled in the Caribbean is an island that is called St. Kitts. St. Kitts, or then it was called St. Christopher. And I believe it was settled in 1627. So the English settled in St. Kitts in English, sorry, the English settled in St. Kitts in 1627. So that was the first time that they would have settled. Uh, is it 1620? I think it's either 1627 or 1623. One of those dates. And then after they settled in St. Kitts, they would have gone over and they would have settled in Barbados. At the time when the English went to Barbados, just a few tenors lived there and they would have taken over. The Spanish didn't settle there, so they never had to fight for Barbados from the, from the Spanish because they didn't settle effectively there. And so what we're so going to... 1623. It's 1623. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. No problem. So in 1623, they would have settled in St. Kitts. Uh, and then after that, they would have, the English would have gone and settled in Barbados. Then they settled, the French came in after. Then the Dutch came in. And so everybody is going to fight over the different islands in the Caribbean. Some islands they could not touch. So, for example, like for Hispaniola, the island of Hispaniola, they couldn't touch Hispaniola until about 1697, the French went in and they took over a portion of Hispaniola, which is the western side of Hispaniola, and they call that side saint Domingue, which is now Haiti. But Cuba, they completely control Cuba and they completely control the eastern side of Hispaniola, completely control uh, Puerto Rico. This is the, we call it now, the, the Spanish. By 1655, they came and they took over Jamaica. So between 1600 and 1700, quite a lot of island, islands in the Caribbean, our territories in the Caribbean, would have changed political hands, right? So that was, we are now in that period. So envision in your mind the timeline and how we are progressing. When, every, when all the Europeans came, the Spanish would have brought some Africans, but a small number. There was now a mass importation of African labor into the Caribbean. So Europeans arrived, the Africans come in, and by 1791, the Africans are now resisting slavery, a resistance to slavery. Now, 1838 was the end of slavery in the British Caribbean. So the British Caribbean include countries like Jamaica, Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, those territories, 
slavery abolished in those territories in 1838. Others, it was abolished a little later or way later. For example, in the United States, slavery ended in 16, 1865. So long, long after we in the British territories ended slavery, slavery still continued in America. So America is no epitome or perfect example of what we should aspire to be like. There are some things in there, we call it now, the United States that we should admire. There are certain things that we could, we could admire, but in terms of historical trend, especially when it comes to race relations and slavery, we are way ahead of them in the British Caribbean or the English-speaking Caribbean. So, the, so slavery ended. After slavery ended now, ladies, in the British Caribbean, we have the coming of indentured laborers. People coming into work on contract. The Indians coming in, the Chinese coming in, the Africans coming in. While slavery, while, while we have all of the, these people coming into work, the Africans or the former enslaved people say, listen, we are not going to continue to work on the plantation. And that's why they had to go and get other people to come and work in the Caribbean. You're going to have free villages and peasantry established in some Caribbean countries. We're going to look at this separate. So all of these points, we're going to look at them separately. After that, now, ladies, we have the Born Bay Rebellion taking place in Jamaica. And by the 1930s, we have the labor riots in Jamaica taking place, where everybody in the Caribbean, laborers in Jamaica, Barbados, St. Vincent, Antigua, all the islands, Trinidad, all the islands in the Caribbean say, listen, we are tired of the poor, the poverty, we are tired of the poor work environment, the, the poor working condition, we are just tired of not having a say, we don't have a political say in our country, in our, how our country should run, we can't vote, right? And so in the 1930s, you have riots across the Caribbean, then the British is going to send somebody by the name of Lord, Lord Moyan to, to, to have his commission, right? And so he's going to come in with his commission and he's going to say, listen, the, I want to see what is going on in the British Caribbean. What are the problems and my suggestion? And he made, he said the problems why he had all these rights was that the people need to put a say, they need to, to vote for their representative. They also need to, because there's a lot of poverty in the Caribbean, agricultural problems, land problems, people can't own lands in the Caribbean. For example, countries like Barbados, that was a much smaller territory, highly populated. Most of the lands were in the, the hands of the whites. And so, He's going to make some suggestions. And he said, listen, you need to have, you need, we need to give the, the islands independence or the British territories independence. Because remember, we're looking at Ghana and Belize who were not, they were not islands. And so after that now, by 1962, the first territory in the British Caribbean to gain their independence is Jamaica, then Trinidad after then, Barbados and Ghana, 19, 1966, and then the other territories fall after. And so we are now in the era of being dependent territory. All right? So that is our timeline that we are going to look at. Quite a lot, lot of history for such a
So we are looking to it. Then now you should have an understanding of all the events that happen. What happened first, what happened after, what happened next, what so you should have an understanding of the historical time. So before that, we're going to start here. This is where we are starting today. 11,000 years ago, what was the area like? 11,000 years, all right? Good. 11,000 years ago. So when we talk about the Americas, what are we, what are we making reference to? The Americas. North, South, and Central America. Yes, but you leave out one important part the of Caribbean. the Americas. The Caribbean. So when we make reference to the Americas, we are talking about all this area here is included as part of the Americas. The Western Hemisphere, North America, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, all of this area is the Americas, right? That's why South American people, people in South America, they are very upset. They don't like when, I, when people from the United States say that, oh, we are American. They get offended by it. Even people from Central America. And in fact, they say we are all American. Your country is the United States of America, but you are not the only American. But that's up for debate. Since they claim that they, since the Americans claim the title as American, we can leave them with it. Now, when we talk about the word indigenous, what are we making reference to? Sir, something that is unique to a certain region or country. Yes, unique to a certain region or country. Anyone else? Anyone else? When we talk about indigenous, what comes to mind? Indigenous. Karma? Hi, sir. Um, would indigenous be like the original, per well, not only person, but original things that would have happened before? Or, yes, original. So that, yeah. is one, so that is one of the major words that comes to mind. Indigenous, original, first. Very good. So when we, when we talk about the indigenous peoples, we are talking about the first set of people to live or settled within this area, the Americas. But indigenous people is known by different names. They read different textbooks. Some textbooks have them, call them the native Indians. Some call them the Amerindians. You have Native Americans, pre-Columbian Indians, or pre-Columbian people. So these are all the different names that the indigenous people, the first people are known by. Now, each different groups of indigenous people that would have settled in the Americas also have their own unique name. Now, so this is just a generalized name for everybody, all the first people but they have individual name for each settlement or each group of people that would have settled. All right? Anyone remember, should I get there now? Anyone watch, for example, like Western movie? Yes, sir. What, what is predominantly a feature of western movie the indians yes what about the indians they normally call them savages well some of them call them savages and they're normally fighting with them for like land and very horses. yes so the land belonged to the indians and the europeans came and they are they try to take away the indian lands and the indians are fighting for their land so that is one of the popular things. Anyone has ever been to Canada or the US and hear a lot of people make reference to the Native Americans, even during political debates, they hear it. 
Anyone from? Sir, sir on TikTok. What up? Tell me about yeah. it. Sir, they have this whole um, native um, TikTok community and they're talking about how um, it's their land and how the, Amer the American people took it from them. Mm -hmm. So it's basically that. They're basically saying that they're, they're thieves. Okay. Yeah. And they talk okay. about the different ways that they abuse their tradition and how they're taking away their culture from them. Very well. So, and that is, that is true. Now, in Canada, the indigenous people in Canada, the Native Americans in Canada, I believe that they go to universities free, they don't pay taxes, they have some level of wages that white Canadians or other Canadians uh, do not have, right? And, but in the United States, I'm not sure about if, they, if the Native Americans there have any form of privilege, right? But Native Americans do exist. Also today in the Caribbean, we do have some indigenous people, but we'll get there later on. So always remember when we hear the, hear the word indigenous, we're talking about the Native Indians, the Amerindians, the Native Americans, the pre-Columbian Indians are pre-Columbian people. They were the first group to settle in the Americas. Now when migration, when we talk about migration, what are we talking about? Migration. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so sir, migration is like the movement of people from one place to another with the intention of settling either permanently or temporarily. Yes, you are correct. And sometimes when we move to one place, you don't always think that you 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 are migrating there to to stay forever, right? You can you can migrate, as I said, temporarily. You, you plan to just go for a short period of time, but you end up staying for a very long time. All right? Now, there are several different views about the indigenous groups. And one of the first view is that they came from Asia, which is this part of, if you look at my computer, the cursor right here, they came here and they came across the Bering Strait during the fourth ice age. So that is one of the view. So during the fourth ice age, they came from Asia over this side, this area right now is called Alaska. This area, Alaska, came from Asia across the Bering Strait into Alaska. Uh, other groups, so, so they came, and there's one thing you need to know, ladies, is that the first people, they followed herd of deers who were searching for food. So it was during the ice age and the dares they were they wanted food and they searching for food and because the early indians they were they they used their one for food and also for clothing they followed them and so that is one of the view that how they ended up this side of the world all right it's up for debate some, somebody might just come and say, listen, that is foolishness. Nothing don't go like that. God created people all over the earth. I and mean, God placed some people in America, North America, South America, Central America, Caribbean. Nothing don't. But this is what is historically accepted also by archaeology. Uh, there are two theories about this area that they would have crossed first people which is called the Bering Strait. Today this area is a sea. It is a sea. It's called the Bering, the Bering Strait is a sea today. Yeah. It is a sea. And so 
the two views, there are two theories out there about the Bering Strait. One that is called the Land Bridge Theory, and the next one is the Ice Bridge Theory. So some groups argue, which is the Land Bridge Theory, that this area, this area was a piece of land before. All right? There are two views to the land bridge theory. One, that all of this area, the Bering Strait, what is now the Bering Sea, a piece of land stretched across it. Others argue, if you look at my map, that all of these small, tiny little islands here, that they would have moved across from the, this side to, to move over from Asia into North America. Another view argues that the entire area during the fourth ice age was ice. It, they, there was a big continental ice that is there. And as a result of that, they just walk across the ice. The, the sea was frozen and they walk across. Anyone, which view you is more likely to accept? The ice one. So you'll move. Why? Well, I don't want to be biased, but Ice Age really showed me what was the truth. And I believe because of the climate change, on the climate change situation, that over time that could be explained. Mm -hmm. versus the land bridge which where did the land go i know it could break off and probably sink but did anybody find the land but also yeah. if if you look on this side of here there are some very small islands could it that be that they just hop across the little island so you're saying both of them could be true in the same situation like it's both land and i from, all right, so my personal view on it, I really don't know. So I don't really have, I'm not going to say, the one that sounds more realistic to me would have been, uh, uh, the one that sounds more realistic to me is the ice bridge theory. That's my view. But I'm not going to say I'm 100% correct, but there's a possibility that the land bridge is also correct. Elliot, what's your view on it? Uh, sir, I, I've always, um, I've always been told about the ice bridge theory, so mm -hmm. I guess that would be my view. I've heard about the land bridge theory before, but like Serene said, I don't know where, where did the land go, you know, and why hasn't it been found or any evidence of land underneath that area, that, that sea there, why hasn't it been found? So I guess I'd say the ice bridge theory as well. All right. All right. Pama? Yes, sir. Um, I googled the whole tectonic plate up that side and the the plates where the Pacific and the North American plate meet at the top, mm -hmm. they are convergent plates and not divergent mm -hmm. plates mm -hmm. right there. So therefore, if anything was supposed to happen to the land, it would go together to form a mountain mm -hmm. and not necessarily separate. To separate. So, yeah. So, you taking, you accept the ice bridge? Yes. All right. Good, good. That's a very good point. Anyone else? Deidre Jackson? Yes, sir. I also agree with the ice bridge theory i think i might be a bit biased because that's what i've always learned but um i mean i agree i agree with kristen and serene in the fact that with climate change the bridge could have turned into water over the years and that because it was the fourth ice age and most of the earth was covered in ice mm -hmm. then the temperature would have been cold enough to facilitate an entire 
bridge connecting the two continents. So that's what I believe. All right. Good, good. All right, ladies. So we know for sure. Thank you very much, ladies, for your responses. So we know for sure that there are two theories out there. We might have even a fourth theory. So one thing we need to know is that all the groups that came over, they came at different times during the Ice Age. They settled various places. Each settlement had their own cultural practices. They had their own social, political, and economic system. They were civilized. They were not uncivilized. Uh, the term civilization, well, the term civilized and uncivilized is really a European construct. Uh, the next thing is that we need to know is that groups interacted with, with each other. The various groups interacted with each other. So everybody didn't came across at the same time. They came across at separate times and they went different places and they settled and meet up and they interact, right? And they established their civilization. Now, so that is one. The Caribbean, the Caribbean, we need to know, we know the territories which are located in the Caribbean and the different regions. So we have, for example, the islands and we have the mainland territories, right? Uh, that include what we consider to be the Caribbean. So we need to know, for us, all of these areas that are in yellow, we need to know who would have settled in the Caribbean based on either if we want to use the historical definition or the geological definition or whatever definition we want to use. All of these areas are accepted today to be areas that are considered to be Caribbean territories. They don't have Cayman Islands in yellow. Sorry for that. But all of these territories are considered to be part of the Caribbean. And we need to know who would have settled on these islands, the different groups who would have settled on these islands. Now, the three groups or four groups that we're going to look at. We have the Tainos or the Tainos. Some people pronounce it the Tainos. Um, most of you grew up hearing that they are called Arawaks. The next group, the Kalinagos, some of you grew up hearing that they were called Caribs. I have Wemayas and the Garifuna. Now there's a correction. The people didn't call themselves Caribs. They were not cannibals, all right? The Europeans came, they heard the people calling themselves Kalina, and they call, and they, the Europeans came and they called them Caribs because they said that they were cannibals. They eat each other, nothing is like that. Because if they were really cannibals, none of the Europeans would have been here today. They would have eaten all of them. The next thing, Taino, you, we grew up hearing that they were called Arawaks. They were not Arawaks. The Taino and the Kalinagos, they spoke the Arawakan language. That was their language. So their language is Arawakan. Both the Taino and the Kalinago, that's what they spoke. The Mayas have their own language. Now, most of you, the first time you might be hearing about the Garifunas. The Garifunas are a mix between the Kalinagos or what they call black caribs. So the Kalinagos and the Africans mix together sexual relation. The reproduction of that family is called a Garifuna, mixed breed, all right? Uh, so these are the peoples that we are looking at who would have settled in the spaces that is in yellow. Uh, where am I now? Next. So where they, they came from. So the Kalina, the first set of people to venture into the islands would have been the Tainos. And they have different groups of Tainos by different names. And so they came from the Orienko River, which is here. It's a river that 
runs in Venezuela, close to Trinidad here. And so how they would have moved, they would have moved using canoe, moving from islands to islands. So they would have settled in Trinidad, all of these different places. So let's go back here. Let's go on this map. So they would have moved from all of this area, not the Guyanas. All up here is actually the Venezuela, the Orinco area. They move across to Venezuela, sorry, to Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, move up the island. That's how the Tainos would have settled. They were the first group to settle in the Caribbean and they settled all across the Caribbean. Then another group that came from the same area, same region, came after. That's why they both spoke the Arawakan language, because they came from the same region. And the group that came after was called the Kalinagos. And so what, the, what is going to happen now, ladies, is that the Kalinagos are going to have fierce warfare with the Taino. And so some territories are going to have both Taino and Kalinago living on the same island. For example, Trinidad. Half of Trinidad, Taino settled. Half of Trinidad, the Kalinago settled. Barbados, which was way out east, the Taino lived on this island. The Kalinagos didn't settle in Barbados. But on Grenada, St. Lucia, Dominica, Guadeloupe, all of these territories in the Eastern Caribbean, most of these territories were settled by the Kalinagos. Now, but originally, the first people to settle on those islands originally were the Tainos. But when, the indig when, the, when Christopher Columbus came in 1492, only the Kalinagos would have lived along this area. And in Trinidad, both groups lived in Trinidad. In Puerto Rico, on the western side of Puerto Rico, which is here, the Taino lived on the western side. On the eastern side of Puerto Rico, the Kalinago lived on the eastern side. So the two islands that had both Kal the two islands that had both Kalinago and Taino living were Puerto Rico and Trinidad, not Tobago, Trinidad. All right? So that's who would have settled these islands at the time when Columbus arrived in Cuba, Hispaniola, Jamaica, the islands of the Bahamas, the Tainos would have also, they would have lived there. We have no evidence to say that the Kalinagos would have lived there. The Cayman Islands, nobody settled on the Cayman Islands because the Cayman Islands was, at the time, still is very flat. There was no fresh water, no river on the Cayman Islands. So they didn't settle there. The indigenous people didn't settle there. I don't know if they would have gone there for turtle meat because they ate turtle and there was quite a lot. There is quite a lot of turtle on the Cayman Islands. That's why one of the Europeans called Cayman La Tartuga. Another one called it, no, yes, they call it La Tartuga, which means uh, the turtles, right? So this was this pattern. Please know the patterns, ladies. In here, I'm looking for another map. In Belize, in Belize, who would have settled in Belize would have been the, again, the Mayas would have lived in Belize. So all of this area in Central America, the Mayas would have lived in 
Mex Mexico, Belize, Honduras, the Mayas would have settled along that part of Belize. Now, ladies, is it clear? The pattern when Christopher Columbus came, how they would have settled? Yes, sir. All right, good, good. There's one common mistake that I've always seen, even when I'm marking exams, both at the school and at Cape level. Students don't know the difference between the indigenous and indentured Indians. Indigenous Indians are the Indians that came first. They were the first Indians that came. So the indigenous Indians mean the Tainos, the Kalinagos, the Mayans, the Garifunas, those were the indigenous Indians, the Incas, the Aztecs, those were the indigenous Indians. The indentured Indians, if we go back to our timeline, so the indigenous Indians came at this time. The indentured Indians came at this time, 1838. So there are two different groups. Please do not make that mistake. So if you go into the exam and they ask you, what are the contributions of the indigenous Indians? Don't tell me about the indentured Indians. The indentured Indians came from India. The indigenous Indians, they came from somewhere in Asia that is called Siberia. All right? So that's where they would have arrived from. Now, the syllabus asks, also asks us to look at the different effects of the indigenous Indians. And the reason why I do it like this is that I put each under different themes. So if you go into the exam and they answer what are some of the impacts of the indigenous peoples on the Caribbean, you could argue and say one of the impact of the indigenous people on the Caribbean is or was, we, should, we could say is demographic effect. Why demographic effects? When we talk about demography, what are we talking about? Sir, we're talking about a study of the population. The population. So today, in our population in the Caribbean, we still have indigenous people living in the Caribbean. So, for example, in Dominica, the Kalinagos are still living in Dominica. In Belize and St. Vincent, we have the Garifunas. And you might be asking yourself how the Garifunas reach to, if the Garifunas are mixed between the Kalinagos and the Africans, how the Garifunas reach to Belize. And one of the reasons for that is that in St. Vincent, in St. Vincent, ladies, the Garifunas fought against the English and they were expelled to Belize. And that's how you have Garifunas living in Belize. So right now, today, we have Garifunas living in Belize. We have Garifunas living in St. Vincent. We have Kalinagos living in Dominica. And also, we have descendants of the Mayans living also in Belize. So our population of the Caribbean today still reflects the indigenous people. All right? Another effect is our language, names of country, names of towns, popular words that we use in the Caribbean today came from the indigenous people. And please remember examples of this when you are writing, especially for your essays. Names of country, IT, which is AT, land of hills, that's an indigenous word. The indigenous people call the entire place the entire island of Hispaniola, Haiti. That's what they called it. 
And so that is a Haiti is an indigenous word, which is a name of a country. Cayman, which actually means crocodile, is another indigenous word. Jamaica, the English version of Jamaica is called Jamaica, which means land of wood and water. That is also indigenous, indigenous. So some countries today still have the indigenous words for the names of the places. The Cuba is also an indigenous word. I'm not sure what Cuba means. I never do the research for it, but I know for sure that Cuba means. Cuba is an indigenous word. One second. Yeah, so Cuba, so Cuba is another one. Um, names of towns, especially in Trinidad. There's quite a lot of towns in Trinidad that has indigenous names. Rivers in Trinidad also have indigenous names. Places in, in Grenada also has indigenous names. Dominica, places in those territories also have indigenous names. So for example, you have Arima, which is a very popular town in Trinidad. Puna Puna. Uh, Taro, what, how is that pronounced? I'm not even sure. But that also another indigenous name of a place in Trinidad. These are very popular places in Trinidad. Popular words, indigenous words that we use today. Most of you might not even know that these words are indigenous. They were used by the indigenous people. Barbecue, hammock, tobacco, cano, hurricane, all of these are indigenous words. And so our language today is still very much influenced by the indigenous people. Names of country, names of towns, popular words that we use, especially barbecue. Most of you girls at St. Andrew love barbecue chicken because when I go for lunch at the canteen and I want the barbecue chicken, it's finished and the fried chicken is the only thing. Sir! <laughs> Sir! So, yes. So, so, every time you go and you ask for barbecue chicken, or uh, ask for barbecue, you know that's the indigenous. Uh, indigenous word that you're actually using. A lot of us, a lot of people do, don't know that today, right? But that's the fact. Uh, another thing is that the indigenous people influence our food and our cuisine in the Caribbean. Pepper pot, I believe in Ghana, their national dish is pepper pot. Cassava bread, bami. Bami, all of these are indigenous stuff. Bami is also made from the cassava jerk barbecue. But then they used to jerk the iguana and the barbecue today. The, Brit the British brought the chicken and we jerked the chicken. Uh, our barbecue the chicken but back then they used to do the iguana turtle soup crab and lobster the first set of people to make chocolate was the indigenous people they did that manuku is like a type of from the rat family that is popular in trinidad grenada i believe dominica not sure of the other territories, but those territories still use quite a lot of these food today. And we still use Cayman Islands turtle soup. It's very popular in Cayman. I believe they call it crawl soup. Crab and lobster. So many love crab and lobster. And so all of these are popular dishes of the indigenous people that we still use today. Fruits. Oh, yes. My favorite. Pineapple. You realize that on the Jamaica coat of arm, the pineapple is there. Even on your school coat of arm, your school, we call that now, crest, there's some little pineapples that are there. When the, indig when the Europeans came, they saw the indigenous people you eating pineapples. And so our countries in the Caribbean, they were synonymous with pineapples. 
the land of the pineapples, right? Because that was one of the main fruits that they had. Papaya, plums, all of these other fruits. Mommy apple, all of these. I'm not even sure what is the mommy apple or what it looks like. But maybe is apple. Not the American apple, but other apple. Maybe I think my wife told me that it could be what we call the, the star, the star uh -huh. apple. Yes, the star apple is what she said is the mommy apple. Uh, so these are some of the fruits that the indigenous people would have used. And we still use them today. Ground provision of the indigenous people, ladies, sweet potato. Oh, my. Sweet potato, almost every Caribbean country use sweet potato, cassava, corn, cocoa, which is a chocolate, we still use it. So that's how they would have influenced in terms of grown provision. Uh, in Barbados, uh, one of a very popular dish there in Barbados is sweet potato pie. And people still eat it. I believe that was one of my favorite dishes one off from Barbados. Now, some recreational activities that the indigenous people leave with us today, smoking of tobacco. Tobacco, they were the first to grow tobacco. They were the ones who were smoking first. Everybody come here and see them smoking the tobacco and start to use it. Canoeing, rafting, fishing, these are some of the recreational activities that they did. Um, where am I now? The last one, another impact of the indigenous people is that in, indigenous people influences our businesses, our tourism. A lot of people come to the Caribbean today to visit Mayan site, the pyramids, the great pyramids in Belize, the Taino site in Jamaica, in the Kalinago villages in Dominica and St. Vincent. So we use a lot of the you know, uh, the indigenous people to market our Caribbean museum. We have quite a lot of museum hotels, actually names of our indigenous names such as Koyaba Hotel in Grenada. Koyaba means heaven. And you have quite a lot of Koyaba hotels all over, all across the Caribbean. So imagine when once you advertise the hotel, say Koyaba Hotel, they know that Oh, you are going to heaven. And Jamaica, we have businesses in Jamaica that actually name Jamaica. I can't remember which one of the business, but we have businesses that use that. And so these are some of the influences of the indigenous people. They influence today our tourism, our business sector in terms of names and places to visit, recreational activities. We still do quite a lot of these recreational activities, especially the smoking for some people. Food and cuisine are popular dishes, fruit, grown provision, influence, still influence it. Language, names of countries, names of towns, popular words. Demography, uh, the Kalinagos still live in Dominica, Garifunas in Belize and St. Vincent, and also the descendants of the Mayans in Belize. So these are the impact of the indigenous people. When we meet again tomorrow, we're going to look at the Europeans. And we would have gone through some of the Europe. All right, ladies, so our time has expired. Any question? Sir, I have a question as it relates to our IA. So do we choose our topics or you give us specific themes to choose from? No, you choose your topic. Oh, okay. On the paper that they would have sent to you, I believe there's a... Uh, uh, we call it now. I believe there are topics on it that you can choose from. Remember, there's a document that you choose your topic from the listing there. Ladies, remember five, five persons to a group. I don't know what they would have said in the common or about for my classes. I'm teaching two groups, five persons to a group. No more than I don't want four people to a group, five people. So you know who you can work with in this class. So choose your five people and send it to me. All right? 
Any other Hello. question, ladies? Yes. We do we have orals for grade 13? No, project your voice for me a little bit. Orals. You don't have the orals for grade 13. No, not for Caribbean studies. Just okay. you, you you do a paper one, which is a multiple choice, a paper two, four compulsory essay questions, and the last one is a is your IA. Okay. And everybody can go into the exam with a, with a very high grade for the IA. You see the problem in the Caribbean today, let us take this off. I don't want to get in another problem. The 